The Blackpool Combat Club versus Volador Jr. E. Magnus E. Rugido E. Esfinger. You know what's weird about this thing is uh, there was a lot of things I didn't like about it. But then Tony Khan posted the weirdest fucking tweet this afternoon. Did you see this? Uh, is the one about booking for the sickos? That just went across my timeline like a minute ago. That's a different one. Okay. So he says, this Saturday, Council Bluffs, Iowa, Wheeler and Claudio versus Dax and Cash. Okay? So then he wrote, and this is the strangest fucking line I've ever read. After, let me start over again. After last night's return, doctors have today cleared Utah to continue. Hmm. Well, okay. They cleared him to wrestle the match. After the match, they checked him again and cleared him to continue. I guess. That is a weird way to word it. Why do you even have to say that? He won the match. <laughs> like, why are you telling us he got cleared after a match? What? So anyway, this match here... I mean, the match was... Honestly, all things considered, it was like a very good match. It was very good. Okay. Like, th this was announced, like, the day before the show, okay? Like, they had they had uh, two matches and the return of MJF announced on, I think, Tuesday. Nothing else. And then, out of the blue, they announced this totally random match. Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Claudio, and the returning Wheeler Yuta. He's been out six months. Yeah. He's just back in a match tomorrow, it's announced. No, you know, coming, you know, coming soon. Wheeler Yuta's back. Wheeler's here next week. It's like the day before on Twitter. Wheeler's back in a random eight man tomorrow with Magnus Volador Jr., Esfinge, and Ruhito. Between the time this match was announced and bell time, they sold 95 tickets. That's a normal how many people came to the building, right? right? Mm -hmm. This sold no tickets, okay? So this match is announced, and then, like, you know, everyone's alerted the day before. So these guys have to fly in for this match. Apparently they got there two hours before the show. So you've got four guys who work one style. you got four guys who work a totally different style. They don't speak the same language. And they got two hours to put a match together. So, you know, they they do this match, and it's fine and all, but, like, Moxley looks like he just can't wait to get out of there because he has a match in two days in Japan. He should probably be on an airplane. But he's doing this match. Then you've got Yuda, who, this is his big triumphant return, He's in a totally random match, and he gets the pin, which means absolutely nothing because it's against four guys that nobody has any faith in whatsoever. They know the CML guys are going to get pinned. Like, he gets nothing out of this. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you look at the quarters, and this was the least watched segment on the entire show. You had John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Wheeler, Claudia... The least watched match on the whole show. It's like, could we not have something better for Brian Danielson? Could we not put him in a meaningful match? Could we, if we have to have John Moxley here when he should be going to Japan, should we not put him in a meaningful match? Like, this whole thing, I just, I couldn't even, I'm like, why is this even happening? Like, why, why is everyone having to do this? And then, furthermore, Wheeler wins. He pins Ruhito. Way to go, Wheeler. So the Blackpool Combat Club wins. And then like three segments later, we have this Brian Danielson promo that literally the entire promo is about he can never win. All he ever does is lose. Would this not have been better following up his actual loss at the anarchy in the arena where he's sitting on the thing crying to the point where you and I are asking is this guy like retiring tonight or something yeah. why the fuck is he crying well we don't find out till, why he's crying until two weeks later 
But he explains it after a match he just won. Yeah. So, yeah, I liked the four-way that opened the show. I didn't like this. It was a waste of time for everybody involved. There was nothing on the line. Nobody got anything out of it. And it caused a lot of problems involving travel for people leaving the company or leaving the country and coming into the country. It didn't sell any tickets. It didn't need to be done. Like, can we stop doing things like this? Get a card a week in advance and, like, let's go. This this irritated me. I was mostly bothered by, you talked about Wheeler Yuta. How he not been seen in six months and just walks out. One of eight men in this match. And they did have the dancing promo later, but this match was the first time we've seen him since Anarchy in the Arena, which appeared to be a devastating loss. Yeah. And he just walks ahead to wrestle. They had a promo later, but yes, the, the whole thing was slapdash, it felt, thrown together, and uh, not terribly logical. Match itself, kind of miraculous under the circumstances. It was very fun to watch. It was a third party match in a row. It's kind of burned out of party matches at this point. But uh, Claudio was the star. He's taking these monkey flips from his finge and... Uh, just flying miles and miles in the air, and then of course he has a giant swing, and everyone loves that. And Wheeler wins, and uh, the crowd did love this match. So in the end, it worked. But man, there was a lot of stuff they could have done better. Jericho is in catering, where he calls a man Branch. Hi, Branch. Let me show you how to scoop chicken and dumplings. I was so confused <laughs> till I found out later. Oh, he's one of his branches. Yes. His name is Jamie. He's a cameraman. Gotcha. He's so. got a mother and a father. He's not a branch. And he looked like he was scooping just fine to me. Well, clearly he did, did not have the scooping experience of Chris That's Jericho. True. That's who's true. Who's been catering all over the world. And he demonstrates the best way to get a mix of chicken and dumplings onto your plate. That's the best way to dollop it out, he says. Let me try that again. That's the best way to dollop it out. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Daniel Garcia. Back at his training grounds in Buffalo. Remembers early in his career, he had a road trip to Montreal, driving home, got in a car wreck, broke both legs. That sucks. Didn't know if he'd be able to wrestle again. Didn't know if he'd be able to walk again. Obviously, he came back and did both those things. But a taught of life is too short to wait for opportunities. You have to reach out and grab them. That's why I have challenged Will Ospreay. You can't outgrip me. You can't outgrind me. You can't outwork me. It was very good stuff. The acclaimed... Shouting at the Bucks over security, warn them sooner or later you'll come face to face with us and you're not going to like it. It's actually funny because Bone says, we're not here to talk. But you know what? We want to let you know Hmm. that one of these days our paths are going to cross and it's not going to be pretty. You got it. I was like, you didn't want to talk. That's all you did was talk. I wrote it down what he said without even really thinking about it. But yes, you'll come face to face with us and you're not going to like it. (laughs) It's kind of goofy. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.